So I would classify the Swine Disease Research Task Force as the swine health research arm of the swine health team at Pork Board. So that Swine Disease Research Task Force is made up of producers, subject matter experts, and veterinarians. And we meet on a monthly basis, sometimes virtually, sometimes in person, and we discuss what's going on in the industry. So what are some knowledge gaps that we have? What are some challenges that producers and veterinarians are facing on a day-to-day -day basis? And what are some research questions that we can develop to help address those knowledge gaps? Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me in our illustrious podcast studios this week is Dr. Marisa Rotolo. Dr. Rotolo is the Director of Swine Health with the National Pork Board. Dr. Marisa, thank you so much for coming on the show. If you would, let's start out with a little bit of an introduction for the audience. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me, Clayton. Uh, so my name is Dr. Maurice Rotolo. I'm one of three directors of Swine Health at National Pork Board. I joined Pork Board uh, in November 2023, and I manage the Swine Disease Research Task Force. Prior to my time at Pork Board, I was a health assurance veterinarian at PIC. And before that, I worked as a cooperator veterinary epidemiologist with the Center of Epidemiology and Animal Health. Very good. Market growth. The pork checkoff is building a bigger appetite for pork. Today's marketing efforts are not just about selling more pork, but creating long-term demand. The National Pork Board is finding new ways to reach and engage with multicultural consumers and younger generations by leading with taste and flavor. Visit porkcheckoff.org to learn more about building a bigger appetite for pork. Marisa, we're here today to talk a little bit about the good work that the National Pork Board funds and, and makes available to producers. Um, talk to us a little bit about how the Swine Disease Research Task Force works. How do you uh, decide what information you want to prioritize, what research projects you want to prioritize? How does that process work? How do we go from an idea to funding going out to do the work? Sure. So I would classify the Swine Disease Research Task Force as the swine health research arm of the swine health team at Pork Board. So that Swine Disease Research Task Force is made up of producers, subject matter experts, and veterinarians. And we meet on a monthly basis, sometimes virtually, sometimes in person, and we discuss what's going on in the industry. So what are some knowledge gaps that we have? What are some challenges that producers and veterinarians are facing on a day-to-day -day basis? And what are some research questions that we can develop to help address those knowledge gaps? So through those discussions, we developed something called a request for proposals or an RFP, and we release that and those will be open typically anywhere from six weeks to 60 days where researchers can see that they can see what are the, what are the priorities for, for pork board and that swine disease research task force, put a proposal together that addresses those requests. And then we get those proposals and as a group, we go through and decide, you know, does this, does this proposal fit what we're looking to answer? And if it does, we do a, a scientific review. So does the proposal have the, um, you know, that scientific rigor to really get the question addressed? And is it going to add value to our producers and veterinarians? Our Swine Disease Research Task Force is focused not only on endemic pathogens, but also research tailored to foreign animal diseases. So like African swine fever, classical swine fever, foot and mouth disease virus. What we really try to do with this task force is to identify and fund proposals that are going to give producers and veterinarians something that will affect them today. So really focus on field applicable research to help move that needle in the present. You mentioned that uh, you know you're focused on um, some specific uh, pathogens and, and opportunities today. You want to expand a little bit more on the specific pain points and knowledge gaps that your task force is trying to prioritize. Yeah, so we in the year 2024 we've released two RFPs. The first was focused on you know endemic disease control, endemic disease diagnostics. So really broad, looking at your your PERS, looking at your MICO, looking at PED, swine delta, influenza. It was a really broad call to try to move the needle on on these endemic pathogens. We also had um, a request for for a lit review to really 
further understand foreign animal disease management and how that's going to work. More recently, we've released a uh, request for proposals that we just completed that was focused on PED. So in addition to my work with the Swine Disease Research Task Force, I co-lead the AASV PED Elimination Task Force. And so what we do there is we discuss, you know, what are, what are the issues, what are the gaps that we're missing as it relates to PED? What are the tools that we need to advance the needle on PED working towards an elimination program? And so for this most recent RFP, which was PED focused, we took what the ASV task force was, you know, letting us know that they needed. And then we ran that by the Swine Disease Research Task Force. And we had an internal discussion of, you know, what is it that we still need to know as it relates to PED? And we came up with three priorities. One, a field test for a quick assessment of if you've got scours, is this PED or is this something else? We also wanted to explore this question of manure management. So how long is PED infectious in manure type products, right? Your, your lagoon, your slurry, your pits, how long is that virus really infectious? And what are the different um, conditions that either promote that infectiousness or, or help to decrease it, right? And then one of the, the goals of the AASV PED Elimination Task Force is to debate the knowledge gaps as it relates to PED. And one way to do that is to get a baseline of what is it that we know about PED today. And the best way to do that, right, is to do a literature review. And so the third priority for the Swine Disease Research Task Force was to create uh, a literature review focused on what is it that we know about PED today. And so that'll give us a lot of really good information that we could feed into the work being done by the ASV group to help move that needle on PED. Yep. And certainly um, the information is only as, as valuable as the application. Um, we've got to communicate what we learn and in some cases communicate things that maybe we already know, um, but that aren't broadly understood within the industry. Talk to us a little bit, if you would, Marisa, about how do you communicate your findings? So you do your request for proposals, you've got your task force that prioritizes some to get funded, the good work gets done. What happens next with the information? How do you get it out to such a broad group? as we have within the swine industry so that it actually ends up impacting decisions that get made on the farm. Right. So it, most of these cases when, when proposals are funded, will have, um, you know, the researchers will have the opportunity to present that work at conferences. So you might see that work presented at ASV, you might see it presented at Layman, you might see it at the Iowa State Disease Conference, right? So that's one way that you can have let's call it uh, progress updates on this research. Once that research is completed, the researchers will do a final report, which summarizes all of the learnings, all of the, the work that's been done related to that research proposal. And then that final report will be published on porkcheckoff.org. Most recently, we've put together two workbooks that summarize all of our research that's been funded by National Pork Board, one that's focused on foreign animal disease and then one that's focused on general swine disease, right? And we also, I apologize, we also have a third that's focused on PERS. So it's a, a good book that you can go through and look at, hey, what's all the work that's been done in PERS? What's all the work that's been done with general swine disease? What's all the work that's been done on foreign animal disease? And so we have these, these books available. We passed them out at ASV this past year. But those are all available on porkcheckoff.org and are a good source for information where the proposal or the, the research has been completed. But in terms of, you know, progress updates, definitely going to conferences such as ASB Annual Meeting or Layman Conference or the Iowa State Swine Disease Conference, right? Those are good opportunities to have progress updates on, on research that's being done. 
You mentioned uh, collaboration with AASV and your role serving as the chair of the PED Elimination Committee or task force there. Um, how about other industry uh, research groups? I think of like the Swine Health Information Center, even programs like SHIP. Um, how, do you, how do you collaborate with those other industry groups so that we are synergistic with resources and never end up in a situation where you're doing a research project to answer the same question that maybe the Swine Health Information Center is trying to answer and you get to the finish line at the same time, but we duplicated the resources. You know what I'm saying? How, how do you collaborate on that to ultimately best utilize producer resources? Absolutely. That's a great question. So both Schick and Portport are funded by pork checkoff dollars. And so something that, that both Schick and, and Portport work on is making sure that we collaborate, but we do not duplicate. So both Dr. Lisa Becton and Dr. Megan Niederwerder sit on the Swine Disease Research Task Force and they're there, they hear the priorities, and then we have touch bases where we say, hey, this is what the task force is interested in. And, you know, maybe Lisa or Megan will say, well, we've got that with this working group over here. And we say, okay, that's been covered. We share that with the task force. So we have that, that avenue of communication be between our two groups to ensure that we are collaborating appropriately, but not duplicating. Very good. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. And then uh, last question for you, Marisa. It's a lot of work you're talking about for the task force. Um, you know, you mentioned literature reviews, um, evaluating proposals scientifically, right? Um, that's a lot of technical work and it takes up a lot of time. I know you're, you're, uh, you're probably always looking for folks who want to contribute. So if there are people out here listening, you know, veterinarians, nutritionists, producers, et cetera, and somebody says, I want to help, I want to try and help, um, you know, this situation, how do they get involved in that process? The first step would be just shoot me an email. So my email is simply mrotolo at pork.org. Go ahead, get in contact with me. If well, We are always looking for people who want to roll up their sleeves and dig in and do the work. So if someone out there is, is willing to, to get involved and help us go through this process of identifying research gaps and, and identifying proposals that address those, we are Happy to happy to have them join the task force. Excellent. Thank you very much, Marisa. I appreciate um, you coming on the podcast, but most importantly, I appreciate all your help in being a good steward of the industry resources and all the good research that you guys promote, fund, and ultimately communicate to our producer group. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much. Well, thanks to our audience, Marisa. Uh, we couldn't do this if we didn't have people that listen into the podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment and, and like the podcast, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Uh, it's a free podcast. Uh, Marisa and I have done our job. We've put together what we think is a pretty good show for you. Now do your job and help us spread the word. Share it with somebody that you know that you think may find value from this. Uh, for Dr. Marisa Rotolo, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. It's been our pleasure to host the uh, Swine Health Black Belt podcast. We appreciate spending time with you and you hope, we hope you have a great rest of your day.